This is a robot that could sing for your birthday. With some other features, let's welcome the second version of DIY Smars Robot, and in this video, I will show you the steps to fully produce this robot. So let's get started. Hey guys, this is Chris, and today's tutorial is about the second version of Smars. The first controller version was designed around four years ago, and I designed this second version with extra features in a compact circuit board. The mechanical robot parts are 3D printable, and you can get them from the main designer's account on Thingiverse. The previous version had basic functionalities of motion control and Bluetooth connectivity, in addition to an ultrasonic sensor input. The new circuit board version retains the same basic functionalities with control outputs for two DC motors and one servo motor, inputs for an ultrasonic sensor, and a Bluetooth connection at the bottom of the circuit. The added features include a connection port for an OLED display, 12 addressable RGB LEDs, and one active buzzer for melody playback, along with a built-in USB-C programming port. Starting with the circuit design, I used Altium Designer to produce the circuit schematic. The main microcontroller is the Atmega 328P, similar to the one used in the previous version, but this time I am using the SMVKFN version due to its smaller size. I also added an SM version of the L-93 motor driver for dual DC motor control and an SM connector for the servo motor. By placing this CH340 IC, I can convert USB data to TTL and enable programming directly from the Arduino IDE. I selected small size WS28 RGB LEDs for light emission and connected the active buzzer to be controlled from at mega pin number 3. These SIL headers will provide connections for the ultrasonic sensor and the OLED display. The circuit is battery powered, so I placed a 2 pin header for the 9 volts battery, and this LM317 voltage regulator setup will provide 5 volts for the MCU and 9 volts for the motors. If one of the parts that you need in your schematic is missed in your library then visit Octopart, a big electronics components library from where you can compare parts prices and easily download CAD files for the needed components, then can use them in your Altium schematic. After completing the circuit schematic, I transformed it into a PCB design. The circuit size matches the dimensions of an Arduino Anno board to fit the robot chassis. I placed the USB connector and CH340IC on the top side, which will be positioned at the robot's backside. The OLED and ultrasonic connectors are placed on the bottom side, positioned at the robot's front. The L293 motor driver has a copper area heatsink as recommended in the datasheet. I placed the MCU in the center, surrounded by the 12 RGB pixels, with the left and right motor connectors on the board sides. The Bluetooth connector is through hole, soldered to the bottom layer, and requires a 2-pin header to bridge the arx pin of the MCU to the arx pin of the Bluetooth module, allowing switching from programming mode to control mode. Here's a 3D view of my circuit design. It looks neat and well arranged, doubling my excitement to order it. The next step is generating the circuit Gerber files and moving to JLC PCB for manufacturing. I uploaded the design Gerber files and selected black solder mask for my circuit board. I also ordered the design related stencil to be shipped alongside with the PCBs. Five days later, the well manufactured boards were delivered to my desk and I was ready for assembly. The first step to perform is solder paste deposit. I used some old PCBs to hold the circuit steady in place, then I sticked the stencil in alignment to the top side components pad, I dropped the solder paste and gently applied it to the pads. And here is the solder paste equally applied to all parts pads. I recommend that you refer to Altium 365 while assembly, among many cloud features, there you can find an option to assist you with the circuit assembly. The assembly app offered by Altium 365 will help you identify the correct position and orientation of each component so placing them will be with zero mistakes. After completing the components placing I then took the circuit to my hot plate for soldering. And here is a microscope view of the soldering process. I then cleaned the circuit with some flux removal solvent to remove the flux of the solder paste and this way we completed the assembly of all the surface mounted parts of the circuit top side. 
I made some tests to ensure that the connection has been well established so I uploaded a basic color scroll for the 12 RGB pixels and it works perfectly. I also tested the buzzer output. The sound looks good and loud enough. I also tested the motor output and to do so I supervised the PWM signal going from the MCU to motor driver and its impact on the DC motor speed under 9 volts power supply. So the next step is soldering the through hole connectors for the OLED display and ultrasonic sensor, and for the motor's outputs. At the circuit bottom side I soldered this HCO5 Bluetooth module. The final part for soldering is this 9V battery connector as main power source connector, then my circuit is ready for action. The next step is the robot mechanical parts, I 3D printed them using the same STL files provided on Thingivers and here is the full parts needed. I assembled the robot chains and I needed this 1.6mm brass wire as I find it mechanically suitable for the chain joints but you still can use any 3D printer filament of section 1.75mm. I joined the parts together with the brass wire and glued it with super glue, 16 pieces are needed per chain. All in all we need 32 pieces to produce two chains. Next, we have the wheels, there is two slave wheels and two master wheels, starting with the slave ones, some force is needed to put the wheel in place. Then I took this small DC motor and connected the master wheel to it. And I did the same for the last wheel. In order to hold the DC motors and the 9 volts battery in place we need these holding board parts. All we need now is putting the chains to join each slave wheel to its master and here is the robot mechanical parts assembled. As for the OLED display screen, I designed this OLED display housing which will be mechanically connected to the sensor's connection part. I 3D printed the housing and used 2mm threaded inserts to put in place the OLED display screen. I thought about adding this resin transparent piece to the screen housing for better display view and screw the housing cover to complete the assembly. Now everything is ready and all what we need is getting our circuit board connected to the 9 volts battery then insert it to the robot chassis to connect the motors each one to its connector and the OLED display screen as well to complete the robot assembly. All what we need now is the Arduino code and the Android app to interact with the robot so I moved to MIT App Inventor and I produced this Android app that has the four directions control for forward and backward movement and left right turning. I added this color wheels to manually control the LED light color and a set of eyes expressions to show the robot emotions. I set a serial character transmission over Bluetooth for each button and following these characters I developed this Arduino code. I'm a bit fan of the Anki's robots, specifically the Cosmo model, so I tried to mimic that robot eyes expressions for the Smars model. Unfortunately, the available flash memory of Atmega is not big enough to store the robot code, so I optimized some functionalities to keep the fundamental ones. Before uploading the code I must remove this jumper to unbridge the Bluetooth from the ARCS line, then I connected the robot to my computer using USB-C cable and uploaded the code. I waited some seconds for the code to upload and here is the SMARS robot alive. Now we can place back the jumper. I turned on the robot and run the Android app at the top of the screen. I clicked the Bluetooth icon and selected the robot Bluetooth. And by the way, you can check my previously posted tutorial on how to customize the Bluetooth name. Now I can start testing my robot. The robot moving based on the clicks from the app and it could change its face eyes expression also from the app selection. The buzzer actively works alongside with the OLED screen animation and it could be optimized further to produce more melodies. As you can see guys, the robot works perfectly and it follows the application commands. I will try to update the available code with more optimizations. Feel free to write in the comments your improvement suggestions. That's it for today guys. One last thing, make sure that you are doing electronics every day. It was Chris, see you next time.